Hi everybody, I'm, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're gonna take a look at some gameplay from JU87 Stuka Ace. We're gonna start a career and fly our first mission in the Poland campaign. Let's not waste any time, let's get this plane airborne. We are going to begin the career of Herr Schultz, Lieutenant Schultz, if you would. And we're gonna start him out, it's now early September 1939. So one of the first things we need to do in this game is to get our career started, our campaign started. Now what we're looking at right now is actually the mission mat, and I'll come back and we'll talk about this later. But before we get started with anything, there's one caveat that I wanna mention. This is a prototype version of the game, so the way things look and the way things, some of the things play might change between now and the final version. Uh, so some of the, I think the rules are, are largely there, but there might still be a few tweaks to them. That means things might be different, and I might make a couple of mistakes. So this is intended as an exposition of play rather than as a tutorial. What's the game like and how's it play? So the first thing we have to do is we start out a game. At the heart of this game is the pilot campaign, or basically career mode. So we need to start with filling out that kind of basic information and find out where we're going to get assigned in World War II as a beginning Stuka pilot with the Luftwaffe. So let's take a look at the pilot campaign log. So to start our career, we need to put in some basic information on this pilot campaign log. So this is the piece of paper that we're using to track our career. So this would be used over a number of missions to put down all kinds of stuff. And if we scroll down to the bottom of it here, we can see all of the potentials for improvements and advancements with skills, uh, gunner skills, awards we could get, and ranks we can achieve. But all of this is beautifully blank right now because we have no idea how the career of Herr Schultz is going to play out. All we know at the moment right now is that we've got a name, Schultz, and a rank, Lieutenant. So the first thing we want to do with the career of Herr Schultz, of Lieutenant Schultz, is to get him assigned to a Sturzkampfgeschwader. And to do that, we're going to generate a random one to six die roll number using the flight card deck. And this is going to and use this little chart here to determine which one of these Sturzkampfgeschwaders we get assigned to. So we pick our first one here and we get a die roll of five on a one to six. So this is Sturzkampfgeschwader two. So I will jot that information in right now and then we're gonna take a look at what that means. So here is the campaign trajectory of Sturzkampfgeschwader two. So we can see in 1939, where we are right now at the start, we are gonna start out in Poland. So I'm gonna add that. But the thing we also need to do is determine how many missions we're going to be flying in Poland and that is four plus an action point number. We use the action point cards to determine that number and we get a one. So we are gonna fly a total of four plus one, five missions in Poland. So I'm gonna mark that on the campaign log too. And then this tells us the special flight cards that we include in the deck. I'll talk about that momentarily. We also get assigned an aircraft, JU-87B1 Bertha. So let's take care of that stuff. So, Herr Schultz campaign is starting to fill in a little bit. We've got his first theater assignment, which is Poland, his aircraft, a B-1 Stuka, and then I've crossed off one mission here because we know we have to fill in these five blank ones. Now, we have no victory points, we have no victory points available, we have no prestige points, and there's no notes really to make note of, of yet. So, we have taken care of Lieutenant Schultz's initial designation. We've got him assigned to a Sturzkampfgeschwader. We've got his theater. It's early September. Now it's time for Herr Schultz, for Lieutenant Schultz, to fly his first mission. So let's go check out and see how that gets set up. All right, so we arrived at the border to Germany in Poland, and now we have to get assigned our first mission. So we're looking at the Poland theaters sheet here, and we're gonna be referring to this top left Mission selection. We're gonna draw a D12 card using the bottom right number and see which mission we get. And we've drawn a 12 down here, which means it's mission number five in the Poland campaign. Let's take a look at that. So our leaders must think something special of us because mission number five, so one thing you can do is when you look at these flight cards, how many flight cards they are, there are in this kind of determines about how far away this is. So we've got three. Most of the, the ones in Poland are close to the front, like with only two or one to get back to base. We've got a long way to go. This is gonna be a challenging mission. Mission, there's only one sortie and our objective, the railroad. So we'll drop that onto the target card on our mission map 
and we'll talk a little bit about what that means as we go forward, but uh, enemy presence is none, that's good, and objective cards, it's going to take us a little while to find it, but not too bad. We're going to search and then perhaps reach the target, so 50% chance we're going to find it on the first run. So let's get this mission set up. The first thing we want to do is to create our objective cards deck. We have one which is going to represent reaching the target, so that's target reached. And then there are six searching cards. We need to randomly select one of them and not know what it is because different things can happen while we're searching. So I'm shuffling those and I've randomly picked one of those. I'm going to mix it in with the target reached and add these to the objective cards deck. So there's only two of them here. When we get to our target, when we get to our objective, we have to see how quickly we find the target. So either we're gonna be kind of searching around for it for a while and then find it, or we could find it right away, which would be good luck for us. The next thing we have to prepare is this flight card deck. We're going to use the 31 generic cards, which are basically look like something like this. And because this is a European campaign, we mix in the six unique cards for Europe. That's going to give us a, a deck of about 37 cards that we're going to put up here that we'll be using during gameplay. And how we use that will be more kind of will be evident as we start to go through. But one of the things we're also using it for is our random number generation. So I've created that deck and it's right up here for us to pick from. And this will determine quite a bit of kind of the flow of the, uh, of the mission here as we go forward. We've also selected our target, which is the railroad right here. And we'll talk a little bit about that in specifics, what it means as we get closer to it. The last thing we need to do now is to determine the weather. To determine the weather, we're going to pick a random one to six number, and that will tell us at what out, basically what altitude card we get. We have selected one card and picked a two, which is exactly what we wanted because we get altitude number one, and we'll take a look at what that means in terms of weather. So we've put our out one card on the altitude marker, and this is good. No, nothing going on. Perfectly clear weather at high altitude where we're going to start our mission and at low altitude. So all of this is good. Now it could get worse, right? We could see some weather changes depending upon what happens on the flight to the target, but at least we're starting off under good conditions. Let's also take a look now at our railroad target. Basically there's no anti-aircraft fire there, which is nice. We get one victory point if we damage it and four victory points if we destroy it. So the next thing we want to decide is what how many and what types of bombs we want to carry. The B-1 Bertha can hold 500 pounds maximum, 500 kilograms. Now, we could take a look here and see if there's any bonuses to particular weight of bomb, and there isn't. There's no die roll modifiers to the weight of the bomb. However, when you attack a railroad, you get a plus one modifier if the total number of bombs that you're dropping in your dive run is three or more. So, with that information, let's go put the bombs on our Stuka. So what we're looking at right now is, is our plane. This is our Bertha, B-1 Bertha. And we kind of probably need a name for the plane too. But what we're looking at specifically on this for the moment is our bombs. Now we can carry 500 kilograms maximum and we know we want to carry more than one bomb when, when we want to drive that, drop that because that's going to give us a bonus. So what we can do here is to keep, stay under 500, we can put a 250 kilogram bomb under the center of the plane, and then out on the wings, we're gonna put two 50 kilogram bombs on the right wing, and then two 50 kilogram bombs on the left wing, giving us a total, a balanced total of 450 kilograms, and when we drop all these bombs on the railroad, we're gonna get a plus one modifier to hit. So that's a good payload for this mission. Just a couple more things to get ready, and then we can take off. We have to get our Lieutenant Wingman card ready. Now, we have up here, this is the stamina for the mission. And a beginning pilot has five stamina. So we put five stamina chits up in this thing and we can use those to do various actions at critical moments in the campaign. We also have to determine our fighter squadron support on this graph on the left and then the enemy fighters on the right. Now, I look, if you look back on our mission card, we can see that we have zero fighter support so we put that on the highest zero that's available to us. And then enemy fighters is also none. So we're going to put that on the highest zero as well. So now these could change as things go along in the mission. But with that, everything is ready. Our B-1 Bertha is fueled up. We've got bombs under the wings, bombs under the fuselage. We are ready to take off. 
Actually, I lied. We have one thing to do, which is to pick our action cards. Now, this action card deck has a number of cards in it that represent the different things we can do in the mission. One of the things to note about this game, too, that as your pilot advances in skills, you can swap out or add better cards to this deck as your campaign goes along. And that's another way the game reflects, in addition to skills and awards and all these kinds of things and ranks, that's another way that the game reflects uh, improvements to your pilot's ability. Plus, you can add stamina. So the tons of different ways you can tweak your pilot's career to make them more effective. So we're going to pick five cards, and this is the very beginning deck, so these aren't the, the best cards right now. So this one here, if we take a look at this one, just to kind of see what the action looks like here, there are three things that we want to note about this. This is the action point, basically a die roll modifier that you can add to rolls to improve the chances they're going to be successful. That's one way we could play this card. Another way we can play this card is see this pull up three Specifically for a pull-up action, we can use this card to get that modifier, a 3. So it's better than the generic 2, so we probably want to hang on to this card for the pull-up portion of the mission after we've released our bombs as we're trying to get up from the target to get back to altitude. This is a particularly dangerous part of the mission, so I really like the fact that we drew this card, and I think we're going to save this one. Now down here, this is an instant value. We can use this at any point in the mission, before die rolls, after die rolls, at any point that we want to. And this is plus one to our formation dogfight. Now, we're a wingman, so we're not going to be charged but in, responsible for our formation. So this is probably pretty meaningless to us right now. So I'm thinking we want to save this card for the pull-up portion. Now, I'll go ahead and draw four more cards and just make some quick notes on them, and then we'll get started. Okay. <laughs> I've drawn four more cards. The fates have really shined. This is a good omen. The fates have really shined on Herr Schultz. And I did shuffle these all up because most of the AP values are zeros, ones, or twos. Um, and there's like, I think there's like one, three in the initial deck. Not only we draw the three, we drew all twos. We didn't get any zeros or ones. So these are pretty good. Now, we could do lots of different things here. This is adding to our dive, so that's a good one. Uh, just for the AP value alone, these cards are pretty valuable, I think. So, fingers crossed. Poland 2, I think, is decidedly kind of the, the tutorial area of your campaign, if you would. There's not much enemy fighter presence. The missions are relatively straightforward. They're not that far, although we have a very far one. But being able to get these five cards like this, that's a good omen for us, I think. That's a good start. So now we are finally ready to take off. Let's get Bertha airborne here. So the first thing we do, uh, we're going to follow a sequence of play for this mission. And uh, I'll, I'll show this card uh, on, on kind of the side here too. But this is going to kind of guide us through everything that we're doing in this mission. And the very first thing that we have to do is to, of course, take off. This is not automatic, so we have to pick a D12 and see if we get some kind of a takeoff problem. Now on a 1 to 11, as we can see here, nothing goes wrong. On a 12, we have to perform a check. So we're hoping for a 1 to 11 and not a 12. And oh, draw next card and then reshuffle. So that's just a reshuffling mechanism. So we're going to draw that one. And we get a 5. So the 5 here is good. That means that we are able to take off and Bertha is airborne with no problems. So the next element of the sequence of play is the approach phase. And this basically represents us flying from our airbase to the railroad target deep in Poland. And we can tell here on the flight cards that we have to successfully pick three approach cards. So we're going to repeat this approach phase three times. And again, this is a long flight. Most of them are only two or one to get back in Poland. So we are going deep into the heart of Poland, perhaps maybe even to Warsaw to hit a, radio, a railroad kind of head at that position there. So now that we're in the approach phase, we need to pick three flight cards and clear the whatever kind of events happen in that approach element there. So we're going to pick our first one here and hoping for nothing really problematic here, discard it in here. Let's take a close up look at this one. So for our first approach event, we draw enemy contact. However, fortunate for us, if we refer back to our mission objectives, we'll notice that the enemy presence is none for this mission. This is Poland and we have air superiority. So when you have no, uh, enemy presence of none, you can skip this event. So lucky for us, we've cleared our first approach marker. Let's go to our second one. Just to make this visually easier, I'm moving the cards down here, hoping for nothing. Oh, dense clouds set to low altitude. 
So we go back to our altitude card. Now, one thing I forgot to do at the beginning of the mission, we're at high altitude, but now we get dropped down to low altitude because of the dense clouds. That's gonna give us minus one on our dive, which isn't good. It's gonna give us plus one on flak, which is good, because that's mean it's gonna be harder to hit us if we run into flak. Um, and gun dive and formation don't apply to us because we're a wingman and we're not going to be using our guns, we're using our bombs. But still, not good, that minus one to dive is not gonna be helpful. So the weather worsens and our plane has to go down low. Let's get our third and hopefully final approach event here. Enemy recon plane. So an enemy recon plane appears on the plus one die roll modifier to the next enemy contact check. But once again, there's no enemies in the area, so that's good for us. So the recon plane comes by, but there's not really an air force to send after us. So Poland's looking good so far. And with that, we've completed our approaches. Now it's time to arrive at the target. All right, so we've reached our objective. Now we have to find the target. And this is where we created those two cards. We know in this event, this is relatively straightforward. A 50% chance we find the railroad right away. A 50% chance we have to search for it and something bad could happen. Oh, okay. Well, searching enemy contact though. Once again, there's no Polish Air Force in the sky. So thank you, Poland. We don't have to worry about that. That one's out of the way. And we know this next one is target reached. So we have found the railroad. Lieutenant Schultz with relatively low amounts of advance. I mean, we're at low altitude, that could create some problems, but we're here, the aircraft isn't damaged. It's time to make our attack run, Stuka dive. All right, it's time for us to dive. Now, this is, there's an entire sequence of play for this. This is almost like a mini game to itself. And if we take a look up here, these are the things that we're going to be doing. So first up, we have to select our release height, either base, near or lowest. Lowest means we hang on to our dive for a long time, giving us a really good chance we're gonna hit the target, but it's also giving us a really good chance that we're not gonna survive the pull up, we're gonna crash and die. As a rookie pilot, this is unadvised, so I think our choices are between base and near, and we'll talk a little bit about our decision on that momentarily. Now, then once we select our re release heights, we have to execute our dive, we have to survive any anti-aircraft fire, we have to release the bombs well, and then we have to pull up away from the target successfully. If we do that, we're gonna be able to replenish our action cards by picking as many as we have for our engine power. And our engine power on our plane right now without any damage is two. So we know we're gonna be able to kind of get back some action cards so we can burn through them here and there's a number of ways we can do that. First, let's select our, uh, our kind of release height. We're gonna be a little bit bold here because remember we drew this card here at the beginning to our action deck which was the pull up three. So that's a plus three modifier on the pull up. So we're gonna take a chance and we're gonna save that card for the pull up phase. And we're gonna release at near, which is gonna give us plus one to our release, but minus one to our pull up. But I'm hoping that card can offset that and we're not gonna crash into something. So we're gonna be a little bit risky. Herr Schultz is gonna be a little bit bold here on his first mission. He's holding that dive longer than advised for a rookie pilot. Let's see if his boldness pays off. Now, we need to execute our dive. For this up here, we're gonna use this die roll modifier here. We need to roll on a D6. We need to get a four or greater. Now, what's gonna be involved in this? There's die roll modifiers that are specified here, and we're gonna pick a flight card deck. It's like rolling a six-sided die, plus any action cards that we can get to bear on this action. And that's what we're gonna to use to make sure that we get a four or greater. Because right now, what we have our visibility isn't playing a role. The formation isn't playing a role because we don't worry about the formation as a lieutenant. Altitude, however, remember the dense clouds have pushed us down to low altitude, which has a minus one die roll modifier. So if we just pick a flight deck right now, we have to pick a four or greater, and there's a minus one involved to it. So we'd have to get a, what, a five or greater, a one third chance that we're gonna execute our dive if we just leave things the way we are. However, we are going to influence things now. We are going to play, there's two things we can do here as action cards. We can play a card for its action point value, which we're gonna do. So we're gonna add this to the die roll modifier. That gives us, instead of a minus one, we're gonna add three to it, a plus two. So now, the only way we could fail is if we draw a one. But this is big, right? I don't wanna have a minus two release to it. So there's one other thing we can do. We can burn one of our stamina tokens 
to draw another action point card from the deck. So we're gonna do that. We have five stamina. We're gonna burn one of them right now. That leaves us with four, and I'm picking a random card from the deck. Now there are some zeros here, so it's not guaranteed. We get a one. That's excellent, because with that now, we burn some stamina, we used up one of our cards. However, we have a plus three modifier to this die roll, which means we are dialed in. We're gonna pick a random number from the flight cards right now. We get, oh, we got a six anyway. Terry Schultz is on fire. So six plus three is a nine. We have passed our dive check and we do not get the minus two release penalty. So we've successfully executed our dive. Now it's time to come for the anti-aircraft fire. Anti-aircraft fire is right here, and the slash means there is no anti-aircraft over this railroad yard at all. Done with the anti-aircraft fire phase. Okay, one thing I'm realizing is Herr Schultz is a little bit dumb because Herr Schultz had a dive card that would have given us a plus three. So, well, we should probably shouldn't have used that other AP card. We could have used the dive card instead, which would have left us our AP three card. So, a little bit of a tactical error here by Herr Schultz, not thinking quite right. However, we'll drive on. So that tactical error that we made has actually caused us to burn up two stamina that we could have saved. We could have been smarter here. Herr Schultz has a lot to learn. We're through the dive phase and the anti-aircraft fire phase. Now we have to release our bomb accurately. This again has a check on a four plus for this. Now, had we used our dive guard uh, for the plus three, we could have used our other AP card for the plus and gotten the same bonuses here. But Anyway, what we're gonna do, we need a four or greater, and there are no modifiers, because we successfully executed our dive, the anti-aircraft fire didn't mess us up, our plane is in good shape, because we don't have any structural damage that could be impacting the bomb release, so basically we just need a four or better. But, this is big, we wanna hit the target, right? This is why we're here. So we're gonna burn up this card here, which gives us a plus two modifier, and let's burn another stamina here to pick one more card to see if we can add that, hopefully not a zero, we get a one. That's excellent because we have a plus three modifier. Herr Schultz is dialed in, although he's burning up a lot of energy and concentration here. Let's pick our D6. We get a five. Five plus three is an eight. The bomb release is successful. We have hit the target. So after all this work, it comes down to the chances of whether the bomb is actually gonna do any damage on the railroad when we drop them. Now, there's some die roll modifiers here, but we need a four or five to damage it, or six or greater to destroy it. Let's take a look at what we kind of orchestrated for our die roll modifiers. So remember when we selected our bomb pay, our bomb payload, we chose to have three bombs, the four out on the wing, three or more. We've got the four 50 pound bombs out on the wings and the 250 pound bomb, bomb on the fuselage. That's gonna give us a plus one modifier for this target. If we had taken a, a 500 bomb, bound un, bomb under the middle, we would have had a minus one to that. So that was the right payload selection for this. So all our bombs go off the wings. We got a plus one modifier down to this. Now it's time to see if we hit the target. Now, sometimes these, uh, one quick thing here. There's, we can't use a, action point cards to modify this because this is not a check. This is basically just a result of all the action that happened. Sometimes you'll see a card down here that's like plus one to hit or something like that. An immediate effect like that we could use, but we don't have anything like that. So it all comes down to this. We pick our D6. We need this plus one. Now hoping for a five or a six to destroy the railroad. Oh yes! Herr Schultz dials up a six, perfect direct hit on the railroad. Our target is destroyed. That's gonna be nice, giving Herr Schultz four victory points. His career is off to just a spectacular start. So we come back over here and we are gonna drop the target destroyed on the railroad. Herr Schultz has done marvelously so far. However, he's gotta pull up. Once again, despite Lieutenant Schultz's success here, one thing I realized that we had a plus one release modifier over here that I forgot to add to the bomb release. So he wouldn't have had to add some stamina there to hit the target. So again, a little bit of a tactical error there. However, we're doing okay, but we gotta pull up. Now, because Herr Schultz uh, dropped, at min dropped to near altitude to release the bomb, he gets minus one to his pull up. We need a four or greater to survive this and not crash. And that's the only thing. We've got no en engine damage. There's no anti-aircraft modifiers around here. So that's all there is going on right now. We're gonna now pull out that really good pull up card, which gives us a plus three modifier. So we get a plus two. This is still a little bit precarious, right? Because if we get a one plus two, it's a uh, one, 
plus two overall modifiers. That's a three, we crash. So once again, <clears throat> Herr Schultz is gonna crank on his controls here, burn through some stamina, and we're gonna add an action card result to this. Hopefully we don't get a zero E. Okay, <laughs> don't panic. We got a zero. We we're hoping for a one because that would have made it automatic. So Herr Schultz has to pull out of this dive. This is actually, I, I didn't want this to happen, but that zero, there's only like two or three of them in the whole deck. It's not the time for that to show up. Let's hope that Herr Schultz's career here though doesn't have big problems. He's got to pull up, he needs anything except a one, and he survives the pull up. Whew, Herr Schultz gets a four, okay. So four plus two is a six. He successfully pulls up out of his dive He's hit the target, destroyed the railroad, an outstanding first run for Herr Schultz here. However, that, that pull up was a little bit precarious. We don't want a one in six chance we're gonna crash after a mission like that. So a little bit flying on the edge there for Herr Schultz. Now, we get to do one more thing, which is we get to draw the number of action cards equal to our engine power. Now we're over here on the bottom of our B1 Bertha air car, car, card and we see that our engine power is currently at its max, which is two. So we're gonna draw two new action cards and act, add those to our deck for our return flight home, which we'll be glad to have. All right, so we burned through three of our cards on that dive execution. Let's pick two more and get our deck going back up here. Oh, this is a total zero. What a useless card that is. That's like, ah, okay, and there's not even a bonus to it. That's the worst card in the whole deck. All right, and then a one, which is an add plus one to pull up. So these are more representative of what you tip, I mean the zero, that's the worst card there is. But the one here, that, that's more representative. We drew a really good deck with all those die roll modifiers, the twos, the twos, and the threes, and the, the three to die, and we had to use the dive one right. That really made this run quite a bit easier for, for Lieutenant Schultz here. But we still have to get back home, so let's get busy on that. So now referring back to our mission, we've blown up the target. This railroad is a smoldering ruins. The plane is intact. Herr Schultz has had a brilliant first run. Now he's got to get home. He points his Stuka back towards Germany. We need to get three return to base cards in order to be able to survive this mission. Let's go do that. All right, so now it's time for Herr Schultz to fly back. We, I'm just making this, I'm putting these in the approach just so it's easier for us to see and we'll flip them over here to the return. We need to execute three return to base events here in order to be able to win. So we look here on this card that we've picked. Down below, we have a return to base event, position check. Okay, so we have to do a check of four plus or discard one random card. Um, so the question here is do we wanna, it, probably doesn't make sense to burn a card, to risk a card. We wanna leave the zero card in there, right? We could burn a stamina here, but I think we're just gonna take our chances. Let's just pick a card here and see if we get a four, and otherwise we'll just randomly lose one of our cards. Oh, nice, we get a four. We've drawn really well with these cards here. So we survive the position check, we didn't get lost, and we can continue to return to base. We have executed our first return to base card. Two more to go. We have two stamina left, so I think it's looking, well, no, I don't wanna say that. That would jinx it, right? All right, so return to base now. The clouds, visibility worsens. Okay, so that's not good. So to do this, we look at the altitude card. And one thing I forgot to mention is that when you pull up out of your dive, in addition to drawing the action point cards equal to your engine power, you also go back up to high altitude, regardless of what altitude you were at. So we're back up at high altitude and the, and the weather worsens. So we pick a D6 and we apply the results that are right down here on this chart. And we get a three, clear three. So I'll get that card out and we'll see how that impacts the weather here. So we're gonna slide in our clear three weather card and we're gonna stay at high altitude. And it's, it's at high altitude, it's pretty good. If we were down at low altitude, that gets kind of messed up, but um, no gun dive, but that doesn't really impact us. We're done with the bombing run. So on the way back, a little bit of bad weather here, maybe scattered clouds or something like that. Um, that, that doesn't really impact us. So good, two events done. Last event for Herr Schultz. Can he make it back to the base? Return to base, visibility improves. <laughs> okay, so no worries. So after a spot of bad weather, we have to draw a D6, but we rule on the improvement chart. Looks like we might get some pretty good weather here. We get a one, so we go back to clear one. So we'll pull that card out here. I actually left it underneath. And 
the weather is brilliant and sunny and shiny and we are at high altitude, we have executed our three return to base cards. So there is no landing event really, that final return to base card kind of includes that landing of the aircraft. Lieutenant Schultz, what a brilliant first mission. I mean, some, he messed up a little bit with the use of the action point cards in there. We could have made that easier and saved some stamina. We got pretty lucky with it. Honestly, we got pretty lucky with that initial draw of the deck there to get two, 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 and a three with the pull up one. And our die rolls were good. We could have crashed there. One in six chance that Herr Schultz didn't come back from this one. So that was a little bit too far out on the edge for my liking. And we, yeah. But anyway, Herr Schultz destroys a railroad on his first bombing run deep into the heart of Poland, hitting at Warsaw. World War II, the invasion of Poland is underway. Let's calculate now what the impact of this mission has on Lieutenant Schultz's career. So if we look at Herr Schultz's uh, campaign log here, we now have our first mission to check off. He's got one of his five Polish missions done. Now, victory point totals, I'm, I'm not quite sure on the calculation. There's a formation modifier for the score of a mission, and I'm not sure if you ignore that when there's not a formation, or you add that in some way if there's not a formation, or the formation score means that we actually have to have our victory point total. So we did get four points for destroying the railroad. That's either gonna be halved to a two, or he's gonna get the four, or it's gonna be a six. And I'll double check that before we continue on. That would dictate to how many victory points are going to be available. The PP right here is prestige points. There were none of those involved. Certain targets have prestige value attached to them if they're big targets like aircraft carriers and stuff like that. But we're just kind of doing the regular ground, ground campaign in Poland. So no prestige attached to that railroad yard in Warsaw. No notes to really add here other than I will check the victory point total and, and make note of that in future missions. Coming back from the future, I've gotten clarification on the victory points. It is four victory points for the individual destruction of the railroad by Lieutenant Schultz, and then a two victory point bonus for the formation score, even though there is no formation score based on this chart right here. So total victory points for Lieutenant Schultz is six in that first mission, and I will put that in there. He has victory points available six, and we'll decide how to spend those before the next mission. Now, if we take a look back at our B-1 Bertha, the bombs are away. We've had no damage whatsoever to the plane, so she's good to go for the next mission. We do need a name for our Stuka uh, plane here, but I'll leave that up to, to everyone watching. And then down below, we have no casualties. Our pilot and gunner survived as well, and our engine function is uh, perfectly fine too. And that brings us to the end of Lieutenant Schultz's very successful first mission with a bold diving maneuver, barely cost a, a risky pull-up, but he's come through unscathed. The career of Lieutenant Schultz off to a brilliant start here. Let me know what you think. I, just the only thing I'd add to is keep in mind that there's a bunch of things we didn't see. For example, we didn't see anti-aircraft fire. We didn't incur, in, kind of incur any damage to the aircraft. There was no dogfighting or evading dogfighting, which you're trying to do as a Stuka bomber pilot, of course. And we didn't see any of the formation elements here. As uh, we get 10 victory points, then we get our own wing. So we're gonna be in charge, well, we're gonna fly our aircraft, but we also have some responsibilities for the smaller formation performance of the rest of our fly group there too. So lots of different elements in addition to what we saw today, plus the, the wide diversity of targets and things like that. And again, keep in mind, Poland, I think, is one of the easier sections of uh, this campaign because we, again, we don't have much air presence. I think as we get to 1943 and 1944 over places like the Soviet Union where uh, Lieutenant Schultz would be traveling on this career path, things are going to get quite a bit different. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll put a link to the next episode as soon as it's ready, and I hope you have a great day.